Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here. Welcome to the second channel where we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I have in front of me an old Apple Macintosh mouse, which is for a project that is coming up on the main channel, but I thought I wanted to just go into a bit more detail um, on this and make it a separate video. So I hope you guys enjoy. So what we're going to be doing in this video is refurbishing this mouse and then modifying it so that it no longer has a cable. I paid £10 for this. Um, it is not the first Apple Macintosh mouse, but it's a pretty well-known mouse in the Macintosh uh, sort of community. It's only got one button, um, although it's a very comfortable little mouse. So I would actually really happily use this as a modern mouse, which is hopefully what we're going to do. So we'll start by taking it apart. So this mouse operates using a ball, so we can go ahead and take that out. It's not a bouncy ball, unfortunately, which is a bit of a letdown. This little uh, cat piece can come off now. That just um, you know screws um, in and out really easily. That's probably uh, to remove the hairs and stuff, um, which this would have most likely collected. So we can just go ahead and take out those four Phillips screws. So you can see that's the little um, piece which is gonna be registering the, uh, the button press and then there's the switch in the center. So we've got a bit of an issue. Before we go any further, let's take apart the wireless mouse we will be using for this mod. This cost me a little under 10 pounds and will do the job nicely. Removing the rubber feet under the mouse will expose the screws. Undo those and we can remove the top piece. We're gonna need to remove this wheel as obviously there is no room for that. So if we go ahead and just remove this motherboard, everything will be made a little bit more clear. So here is the new mouse, the internals of the new mouse, and then there is the old mouse. So you can see there, the uh, switch is in the center, whereas on these, it's either side. So in order for us to get that to work, we're gonna have to do a little bit of playing. But whilst we're figuring this out, we can be retro brighting the shell. After cleaning the shell in some hot soapy water, I will place the pieces in a tub with 12% hydrogen peroxide, then seal everything in a plastic zip bag and a UV nail lamp then covers this for four to five hours. Now we shall focus on the board. I'm gonna use the original switch and the top of the PCB, which will align everything and ensure that it is in the correct place. So I removed all of the components besides the button and then cut and sanded the PCB. I then removed the old left click button and then stripped and tinned some wires. Then I joined the PCBs together. Next up I removed all of the other switches as we're not going to need those and removed the battery contacts and extended those with some wires. Time to test that it all works. <laughs> How is this thing still working? So it is time to reassemble this whole thing. I'm really happy with how it's all turned out. The retro brighting turned out very well and they came out looking lovely. I have actually decided to go ahead and reuse the little feet um, that came with the mouse. I just put some 3M double-sided adhesive tape on it and, uh, and stuck it down in place. So one of them's already on there and then the other one is gonna go on this little disc that I basically cut using some pliers out of the old mouse and then spray painted um, gray. It's not like an accurate gray, but it'll look better than it just being a big black circle on the bottom of it. What we need to do is find a way to mount everything. Now, unfortunately, the little battery cage that I made won't fit, so I have just had to Kapton tape a battery in here, but um, there's absolutely nothing stopping me from um, having a little sort of rechargeable um, battery to go in here. I could maybe try and recharge it using a little 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Um, or something that would make it really nice and neat. This little PCB that has the main um, left click on it, that isn't gonna need to be adhered at all, but the battery is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick 
one of these little foam pads down on that battery and then that should um, then adhere to the inside. In fact, I think what I'm gonna do, yeah, is just stick it there like that. And that, even if it doesn't get a massively good sort of stick on it, um, should just press up against the inside of the housing and be okay. Now, the other ones we're gonna have to do are the bottom of this motherboard. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go one either side maybe, just like that. This won't need to come out, hopefully. So uh, I'm gonna just stick those there and there and that should actually be enough. We are gonna need to adhere this little laser um, tube thing, piece of plastic, to the bottom of our disc. Now to do that, I'm gonna be using some more stickiness, but I'll be using the 3M double-sided tape that comes with screen lenses for Game Boys. So I'm just gonna cut out some strips of that. So I'm gonna stick them either side. Um, I just don't really wanna glue anything. I see a lot of people gluing. All right, okay, there is our little laser, which is really cool. So I'm gonna just give that a little clean because I've probably got some fingerprints on it. So we'll start off then with the motherboard. So we'll peel off these um, double-sided foam pads. Hopefully this isn't gonna raise it up too much. That could actually be quite bad. Okay, I think that's all right now. So we'll stick the battery in. Um, that will go there. Put the lid on. We're not far off. So we just need to put this disc in now um, and then test that it works. So before we do that, let's go and put our little foot on it and then test that it actually works because obviously I need to, uh, to see that everything is lined up before trying to fix that piece down. So we shall just set that down like that. And then I'll go and test if it works. So I did have to make a few further changes to get this thing working absolutely perfectly, including downgrading the battery from a AA to a AAA. These things have a absolutely massive like longevity battery life anyway that will probably last me a good few weeks, um, by which time I will order myself down a rechargeable battery and potentially do a follow-up video for this. It's just very difficult to get it's very difficult to get rechargeable batteries onto the island that I live on, um, so I'll have to figure something out. But yeah, this is the wireless Apple mouse, and I'm very happy with how it's turned out. So this mouse is actually a part of a bigger project that is happening on my main channel. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description if you've come across this video and you haven't heard of me before. But I'm basically turning this Macintosh SE30 into something a little bit more useful for modern technology. It's not an old iPad thing, which a lot of people have done. It's gonna be a bit more um, competent than that. But yeah, that's what it's gonna be for. Um, I've also ordered this sort of retro style mechanical keyboard, which looks really cool. And it has my sort of colors um, on it, which I really, really like. So that wasn't too expensive. Um, but yeah, here is the, um, the dongle. Uh, which I will have to plug into this USB-C adapter and then plug that into my laptop. And we should immediately be able to use this mouse, which we can. So I'm gonna tilt this down. This isn't gonna work. Hang on, let me zoom this in. Okay, can you see the mouse? Hopefully, hopefully you can. Boom, look, it works absolutely fine. I can't see what I'm doing through the viewfinder. But yeah, look at that, it's working perfectly. We've got our left click. And uh, I can't, it's hard to sort of prove this to you. Wait, maybe I can do it here. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Oh, 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 there we go. See, it works absolutely fine. So I'm um, really happy with how that's turned out. Yes, it doesn't have a right trigger button, but that is okay because it's for a different project. But that is gonna conclude this video. I hope you've all enjoyed. If you would like to check out the other project, as I mentioned, check out my main channel in the description below. Let me know how you get on. If you decide to build one of these, please send me a photo of it to my Twitter. I hope you've all enjoyed it. I'll catch you later. Bye.